Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to the meeting for the Holyoke Public Schools. Uh, meetings called to order. Roll call, please. Present. Present. <coughs> Here. Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. Here. Uh, really quick, just a friendly reminder, an announcement. This meeting is being recorded and played live on the city's community TV channel. Now please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Lafon. Anybody sign up for public discussion? Nope. Okay. So moving on, we're going to start with the recognition of retirees this evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for, um, we got a big audience here. Um, we're happy that uh, many of you are presenting, but we wanted to start by re recognizing um, the recent retirees in the Holyoke Public Schools. Um, my understanding is there hasn't been a history of recognizing retirees in a public uh, way, and uh, I thought it would be a nice gesture. We thought it would be a nice gesture to recognize those folks who retired um, during the, um, the recently completed school year. One thing um, I overlooked is that once the retirees leave, it's very hard to get them to come back. Um, and uh, so lesson learned, we're going to have to do this in May or June of next year, because many um, of the folks are out in the world camping, traveling, and enjoying the, the life of a retiree. Um, but we're very pleased that we're joined by a series of folks, and these are all people that have dedicated at least 15 years or more to the Holyoke Public Schools, and I think it's, um, the, I think they deserve, I mean, what we're, what, they deserve a lot more than what we're giving them tonight. Um, they certainly deserve a lot more accolades for the time and investment they've made in the children of this city. But these are folks that have really given their entire lives um, to the whole, their professional lives to the Holyoke Public Schools. And so if um, this is just one small way of recognizing, um, I think, people that uh, are very commendable in their service and dedication to our city. So um, I'm going to begin by... Um, calling each one up one at a time. I'd ask that uh, Pete McAndrew, president of the Teachers Union, join us when when each person comes up. And uh, Beth Gage, who's our uh, director of HR, will also be um, joining us up here. And Mildred uh, will be, uh, the school committee chair, will also be there. We'd like to get a photo op with each of you um, as we call your name. So we're going to start um, with, and each, each designee will be receiving a Beautiful clock so they don't lose track of time now that they are, you know, have endless, you know, uh, endless time in retirement, um, which says to honor your service to the children, to children in the Holyoke Public Schools. Um, Mayor, I'd like you to join us as well up there. Um, so we're going to start with Mul Martha Mulcahy, who taught, taught art expression, art history, and specific art styles to students for more than 25 years. She introduced students to various art forms and where these originated from, teaching students all about the culture and geography of specific countries and peoples. She took time and that extra step to include all students and met their needs. Her display of student work at the yearly art show each year was amazing. Martha went above and beyond for her students, uh, parents and staff all benefited from her diligence, dedication, and talent. And she always, as long as I've known her, she's taught in a very big open space, which certainly is not the envy of our teachers. One of the reasons we need new middle schools is so we have dedicated art space. Um, Martha, why don't you come up so we can recognize you.
It's our first. It's our first time doing this, so bear with us. <laughs> yep. All right. Next, Bruce Fry. Come on up, Bruce. <laughs> Bruce, like, go right, right in the center here, Bruce. So for 16 years, Bruce was a dedicated programming and web teacher, building technology lead spent. Uh, it was also a building technology lead at, and vocational director at, toward the end of his career. Bruce developed and implemented many of the systems still used for data collection, admissions, and building-based communication. He was instrumental in servicing all the technology at the Dean campus and keeping students and teachers online at all times. Bruce was a true professional who was capable of problem-solving any dilemma that came up within the Dean community. Bruce's dedication and commitment to getting a job well done and doing it right was his strength. Congratulations, Bruce. Okay, next up we have uh, Kathy Alderman. Come on up, Kathy. Go right up to the middle there. So, Kathy Alderman taught in the Holyoke Public Schools for over 25 years. She was a very effective literacy specialist and reading interventionist at Sullivan School. She did terrific work with small groups of students to help them improve their reading outcomes. She was always willing to take the extra step to help students. She always brought a positive attitude to her work, always having a sunny disposition, despite the oftentimes difficult personal challenges she faced. Congratulations to, congratulations to Ms. Alderman. I just wanted to thank um, the school district for giving me this opportunity. Um, you probably did not realize it, but um, when I retired, it was very, very quick. And I had some health issues and my immune system was down. So I had to kind of come in in the sweep in the night when the students weren't there and the teachers weren't there and get my things and go. So I didn't get to say goodbye to my students or my colleagues and so um, and really have some closure so I was so thrilled when you called and gave us this opportunity and um, I also just want to say thank you for the opportunity to work with the students of Hoyoke because they ignited my passion to teach and they gave me the motivation to come every day no matter what was going on on the outside and I want to thank my colleagues. I did seven years of leadership in the district, both in schools and district, and I had the unique opportunity to go out of my classroom and into other people's classrooms. And I was floored by the commitment and um, the willingness, the drive of the teachers, their craft, I picked up so much from them. And um, it was an, an amazing experience to see how the whole network works together um, and how it plays out in the classroom. And, and that opportunity, and I would, I would say that to anyone who could get into leadership because it gives you a voice, what's happening in the school district. And um, finally, last but not least, I really want to thank my family because um, anyone who is married to a teacher or family member or something is going to make a sacrifice. And um, especially when I was in leadership, there were times when I came home from work, took an hour off, 
went in my office, closed the door. Husband come in with a meal because I had to get something done. <laughs> you know, but it's it's that kind of support that um, my family have always been supportive of my my job, and um, without them, I never would have been able to do that. So I just wanted to take a minute to to thank them, and um, with that, I am. <laughs> know that everybody who's in the district, I'll be watching. I'll be there in spirit, but. Thank you, Mrs. Alderman. Um, and last but not least for this evening, unless I'm forgetting somebody in the audience, uh, Miss Elena Danik uh, spent her entire career. Come on up. Over 30 years at Sullivan School, she is a relentless planner. Her plans for every day and her ability to be ready for her children on a daily basis were impeccable. She was thoughtful and spent countless hours planning for her lessons and as a result of that had great impact with her students, always getting terrific results, um, especially from her ESL students with whom she worked each and every day. Ms. Danik was universally friendly and never had a bad word to say about anybody with whom she worked or any of the students with whom she cared for. Um, always very kind uh, and incredibly Im effective and impactful teacher, uh, Ms. Danik. Congratulations. I just finished my 33 years at Sullivan School. Uh, Sullivan School was my home away from home, more maybe my home. Um, what I liked the most about the place I work were the children and the teachers that were there. Um, I have four principals and each one of them made a difference in my life. Uh, I started with John and I ended with John. Um, my kids were the most important thing in my life. A lot of people say they have heroes. And I come originally from Venezuela, and I would say Simon Bolivar, and here they would say Joe Washington. But in reality, my heroes were my children. The children of Holyoke that every single day, no matter the circumstances, they would go to school, they would put the, first, the best face forward and do their best. Those are the children that I consider heroes for me. I think that if we inspire them to do their best, they will do and produce for us what we always want. So I hope that whoever takes my place will do the same I did for them and they did for me. I learned from them just like they learned from me. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and to be a teacher in the city of Holyoke. Um, I don't, if Mr. Fry or uh, Fry or Miss um, Mulcahy, if you want to say something, I didn't want to, we didn't know how this was going to go, so we, you're welcome to, I don't want to shortchange you if you'd like to say something. Well, uh, I got into teaching back in 2001, and it's kind of an interesting story. It was a midlife job change. The company I worked for uh, consolidated operations down in Georgia. And I had one of those moments in life where I could go to Georgia with my wife or I could do something else. And it was the perfect opportunity to do something else and do something meaningful that helped other people. And it was the proudest moment in my life at the convocation back in August of uh, 2002 when I was recognized as one of the new incoming teachers and I'm just so happy to have 
done what I could do for the children of Hoyoke. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Uh, do we have anybody else in the audience that we missed? Otherwise, I'll read out the names of people who are um, on. Sure. Go right ahead. It's interesting because many of the people that we honored tonight, I also did as a teacher for elementary school at uh, <laughs> Sullivan. But one thing that really stuck with me is walking in, um, walking with Mrs. Mulcahy, and I said, yeah, I had her for a teacher in elementary school, and, and she corrected me. Uh, and she was actually a volunteer teacher. Uh, because at the time, um, Holyoke was, and many districts, but Holyoke in particular, was going through uh, huge uh, constraints on the budget, and um, almost all arts were cut at the elementary level. Uh, and I mean, teachers who lived through it knows uh, what it was like. And as students, uh, I, I knew that times were tough because there was those days that we had a, a longer Christmas break, for those of you who can remember that, to save some money on heat, or we were encouraged to bring extra paper in from home. but. I never knew that people like Mrs. Mulcahy and I'm sure many other teachers were there just as volunteers so we could get those opportunities. And I, I, I call her out because she told me that story and I'm sure there were hundreds of teachers who did the same, but it's just something that it's uh, reflective to think about what it was like uh, when I was a, a student then in elementary school and also some of the things that we face today in, in education and some of the same things that we're still fighting for. So it, it really is the thing and I think Mrs. Alderman hit the nail on the head when she said that she would get home and she'd lock herself in her office and still have hours and hours worth of work and probably not finish it and still go back in and, and do that. So really, it's, it's something to think about when you th think about the time and hours that people put in and, and students not knowing um, really what was going on and what people were doing out of the kindness of their heart for their students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do just want to... I do just want to read out the names of the folks that could not be with us tonight, and we'll be sending them um, uh, their, uh, their recognitions. Um, Gary Baldwin from Holyoke High School, uh, Kathy Bennett uh, from Holyoke High School, Andrea Bryla from Holyoke High School, uh, Mark Feinberg from Holyoke High School, uh, Phil Christofority from Kelly School, and he was also the district-wide arts uh, director, uh, Maureen DuPont uh, from Lawrence School, uh, Barbara Bernard, also from Sullivan School, um, and from the Transitions Program, um, Norm LeBlanc. So I want to recognize all of those folks. Uh, it's very difficult, very hard to replace all of you. Um, and uh, thank you for, um, again, thank you for all your service to our schools. And we'll make sure next year we do this in May or June so we capture everybody before they leave us. So I want to thank the people that took the time to come back to us and for your um, outstanding dedication to the Holyoke Public Schools. And please do not feel obligated to stay for the whole meeting. You know, you're no longer an employee of the school system anymore. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to go ahead and move on um, with the student showcase. Opportunity Academy oh, present. Would, no, we're not going to go with that. Updates, student updates. We're going to do student updates first. What I do want to say is I want to welcome Javon Perez. He will be representing Holyoke High Dean Campus. Welcome to the Holyoke School Committee. <laughs> Can't wait to have you here every month. So we're going to start with him first. If you'd like to give an update on what's happening, what's hot, what's not. Um, everything's actually going pretty good. Our attendance is actually getting better, and we've seen that, that um, this year people are starting to go to school more, and we're a little bit strict about it now, but it's helping us very more. And I want to say that Dean's actually a good school. We changed a lot. Yeah, there's some stereotypes, but we came from a lot, and yeah. Thank you. And Ms. Charlotte Brunette. Hey. Uh, so school has begun at Holyoke High School North Campus, and with the new school year comes new technology. We got our brand new Vista projectors the eve before school started, and they've been used around many classrooms, though to mix success because they were delivered, but there was no instruction manual. Um, <laughs> All, as well, we've gotten um, new opportunities such as the Global Glimpse Club, which is a two-year leadership uh, group where you can take um, many opportunities such as traveling to Ecuador 
as part of your leadership training, as well as the beginning of fall sports with an especially good um, turnaround for girls volleyball. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody have any questions, comments? No. So then we're going to go ahead and move along to student showcase. Well, so this, this, uh, the present, the student showcases are built into our presentations tonight. So we have students uh, that are going to be part of our two presentations. Uh, that one is our Opportunity Academy, um, uh, and there's a team from Opportunity Academy, ca Academy that includes staff and students. Um, and then we have a brief presentation from our middle school success program as well, and that also includes uh, students, I believe. No? Or is it just you, Mr. Peterson? Okay, well, at least we have you, but <laughs> per per perhaps others. So why don't we start with Opportunity Academy? Uh, we didn't, we, we uh, saved you all on death by PowerPoint this evening, so there are no PowerPoints. <laughs> your, um, the information that you need uh, is in your packet that Opportunity Academy presented. So I'm going to turn it over to the director of Opportunity Academy, Mickey Buell. All right, so students, come on up. We'll get right in here. Um, so as they're gathering, we gave you a PowerPoint that you can read with some of the basic information. But the most important thing to hear from us as the leaders is that Opportunity Academy is entirely about providing an individual pathway for each student for whom the big campuses don't work well. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. So we had a bunch of students come on up, come on up further, come on up in here so everybody can kind of be around. And so Opportunity Academy has three programs, Gateway to College, we partner with HCC, the Success Center, which we run directly as HPS, and Lighthouse Holyoke, which we partner with, they're the nonprofit personalized learning school. And so we've got the directors from there, so, so Vivian and Catherine and Jeffrey come on up so that if we do have questions, we can answer them. But the real experts are right here. So I'm going to have two students um, share a couple remarks, <laughs> and then we're hoping that your questions to understand what Opportunity Academy is all about can be answered through their experiences and their answers. So, um, so Miliani, I can either give you this to hold or I can give you this in the stand. What's going to be best for you? All right, this is Miliani. Why don't you introduce who you are? Um, good evening, my sorry, my. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Miliani Machuca, and I go to Gateway to College at ACC. I'm here to talk to you about my experience in a traditional high school and why going to Holyoke Community College Gateway to College program was the best option for me. Before I started my freshman year in Holyoke High, I was in a bad place, and what I mean by that is that I didn't care about anything personally, I had so much anger and hate within me, but I also did not know who I truly was or wanted to be as a person. And now to me, knowing who you are plays a big role in being in a good place outside of school as well as in school. So when I started my freshman year in Holyoke High, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good either. I would rarely show up to school, or if I did end up going, I would always go late. I wasn't interested in my classes or learning anything. Honestly, I was more focused on fitting in even though I felt like I didn't. But what does it mean to fit in? In ACC's Gateway to College program, there is no such thing as fitting in. Everybody gets along. My first day walking into the Gateway office, I was so nervous I didn't know what it was going to be like. I quickly assumed the worst. But as soon as I stepped in, a couple students came up to me and asked for my name and why I was there. They even checked to see if we had the same classes. They were really kind and they made me feel welcomed. After a few weeks, I had a few friends and I started to feel like I belonged. As for my classes, they were a bit hard in the beginning, but if it wasn't for Vivian Ostrowski and Julissa Colon pushing me to do better and helping me with my classes, I wouldn't have realized how much potential I had. My grades have astonishingly improved and I can finally say I'm in a great place with my academics and that I actually like going to school now. I graduated in December of 2019 and I plan to continue at ACC for nursing. I will be the first member of my family to go to college and it's crazy because I wasn't planning on going. But Gateway to College made it an option for me and they will do the same for you. Thank you for taking the time to hear my story and I wish you all a good evening. All right. 
All right, so I'm going to introduce Jose, and he's going to share his stories. Um, Jose attends the Lighthouse program. Probando, probando. Eh, buenas tardes a todos. I'm really happy to be here with all of you. I'm Jose Serrano. I come from Lighthouse. And before I went to Holyo High, I was a good student. I did really great things. But one day, everything changed. I didn't want to go to school. I started to leave my classes. I started doing bad stuff. But I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm here to talk about Lighthouse. Like how it is and will be the future. Maybe some of you don't know what Lighthouse can do for our community. All I can say is that I was lost and Lighthouse found me. Maybe you take Lighthouse for granted, but Lighthouse lightened my path. And not just mine, it impacts all our community. People that didn't want to live or alive because of Lighthouse because they were not looking at papers that somebody in the past wrote. They saw the people, the students that will make the future. The cars upgraded, the phone upgraded, and Lighthouse upgraded the education, not thinking how the world is today, but thinking how the world will be tomorrow. So the question, how Lighthouse impact me? Well, there's no word to describe it. I'm just thankful, thank you. Okay, so I want to open it up to any questions, and then students, as you answer questions, if you're interested in responding to that, just give me a little show of the hand, and I'm going to pass the mic to you, and then we can have as many people respond as we want. We have students here from Gateway, from Lighthouse, and from the Success Center. So when you introduce yourself, just share your name, which program you're part of, okay? Really quick, can I have them all say their name first, where they're yeah. from? Yeah, go ahead and pass the mic down and just say your name and where you're from and what program you're in. My name is Miliani Machuca and I'm from Gateway at ACC. My name is Megan Ely and I'm from Success Center. My name is Caitlin Paul and I just graduated from Gateway in June. My name is Isaiah Acevedo and I'm from the Success Center. My name is Nashley Orocho and I'm from the Success Center. My name is Christine Ely, and I recently graduated from Success Center. My name is Jonathan Montanez, and I'm from Success Center. My name is Doris, and I'm from Lighthouse. My name is Mark Calderon, and I am from Success Center. I'm Jose Serrano, and I am from Lighthouse. Ms. Ms. Williams, sorry. Ms. Machuca, um, what made you decide that you needed to kind of turn your life around and go in a different direction? Well, um, I just, I, my family sat down with me at one point and they, they just told me straight up that I had to get my act together because if not, I wasn't going to go nowhere in life. And, um, it came to a point where I just, I felt like I had never had nothing to do. I tried getting a job and I just wasn't able to get hired. So I decided to go to school. For you. And I just have one thing to say about the young man with the lighthouse. I love lighthouses. In fact, in my kitchen, I have framed around my kitchen lighthouses. But if it weren't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? So that's cool. Oh. Not a question, Steve. Oh, it was. I was waiting for an answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> that went over my head. Mr. Kershane. Um, I, I was wondering if somebody from Success Center could tell me about how they got into Success Center. And maybe there was a graduate I heard. Maybe that would be a good person to say how they got into Success Center, what it's done for them, and what it was all about. I think it would be great if a couple of the students from Success Center could say what made the Success Center a good fit for you, uh, because it's a very different story for each student. Who asked? Um, 
I was in Holyoke High. I wasn't even in Success Center to begin with. I was in Holyoke High for four years. I switched to Success Center my senior year because I was behind in a lot of credits. Um, they helped me a lot to do with my credits. I wish Nicole was here so I could thank her because she was a, a great impact for my math and class, but everything went well for me for be, to be able to graduate from there. Cool. Awesome. Wow, cool. Cool. Thank you. I just um, how, how did how did you find out about the program? Did the program find you? How did you find out about the program? My counselor from Holyoke High. City school counselor. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Come on, don't be shy. We went to school together. We right. switched the same year. Yeah. I was, I was, I was just referred <laughs> by Mr. Mahoney because there wasn't anything going well for me in oh. Holyoke High. Always. Any way you can oh. think of it, it just was bad. I was going. I just wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I've earned way more credits than I was in Holyoke High. And I'll, if I could... Get all the credit by June. I'll graduate this year. Okay. Other questions? Any other questions, you, Mr. Burke? You had Burks? a question over here in the corner. Oh, I'm sorry. Can Mr. I hear Perez. more about Lighthouse? So we actually have three students who attended Lighthouse because Mark was at Lighthouse for a little bit of time. Doris, you want to say a little bit? Um, he just wants to explain a little bit more about Lighthouse, how Lighthouse works. Okay? okay. And, and it's actually interesting because Doris, you've seen the Success Center Gateway and Lighthouse during your career, right? So you can say a little bit about all. Okay. <laughs> My name is Doris. Um, I originally started at Holyoke High and I was struggling a lot with my classes. So then I had gone up to Gateway for a semester or two and I was kind of like failing at my classes to the point where I had to withdraw. I knew I was doing really well and I would, you know, all the teachers were really, really, really supportive and Vivian and Julissa and all everybody at Gateway was really, really, really supportive and really caring. I was able to open up completely about what was going on. Then I had gone to the Success Center for some time. Everybody there was like really, really, really amazing and supportive too. They helped me out. I was able to gain credits there and at Gateway. And then I made it back to Gateway, I think, again. And then, <laughs> and then I went back to the Success Center. And then afterwards, I was at the point of really, really giving up because I thought I was struggling. And then I found Lighthouse. My, ther my therapist supervisor, um, actually showed me um, that school and at first at the time when I was introduced to it it had a tuition to go in so I didn't want to go in originally at the first time where I heard about it so then it had opened up publicly for students at Holyoke High to go and so I was like really excited that to get the opportunity to go there so Lighthouse is basically a more individualized um, kind of education as long um, all like classes have to fall under the normal five categories of learning, but it's more individualized, it's more personalized, and it's more help. It's helping more students learn about who they are, what they need. And for me, and what Elias House did for me, I was really, really struggling to cope with life and kind of like even struggling to even want want to live. For a lot of points, I was going through a lot of things with my family in my life and people around me, and I think Lighthouse really helped me conquer that and get past that and have more inspiration for myself, help me grow, help me see the best in myself, and it helps everybody around in that school. Kids come, like, from all walks of life, and it's a very, very big age group. Kids from, like, um, I think middle school all the way to the age of 22 can join, and it's a really, really good community. It's a very familial community, and I think if you were to go in or at least visit and see how it is, because I think describing it is like so like minimal compared to actually actually experiencing it. You like even seeing it is like just so amazing. You feel like a part of the family already, and I think Lighthouse deserves to be more expanded, or more schools need to be more like Lighthouse because Lighthouse is amazing, you know, and it helped me out. Thank you, Doris. Jose's like, no, that was good. That's <laughs> all the way around. Mr. Burks. Wow. You know, I, 
I admire you all for your yeah. strength and your dedication and your courage um, and being where you are today. And I think that, uh, Jose, your speech was so powerful. Yeah. And uh, I'll paraphrase, I'll remember everything, but you talked about um, students like you. One day had felt like they had no reason to live, and then the next day they had a future. And another important thing that you said in there was that the people at, at your, where you went to be educated didn't look at what other folks wrote about you in the past, but they looked at you for who you are now. And you took that, and you took your chance, you took your opportunity, and you ran with it, and you all did. And I'm very proud of you, and I hope that you're all very proud of yourselves because life can be hard. And not just school, just life in general. And you can do two things. You can quit or you can move on. Oh, and you're all moving on and you're doing something that, that I admire. You're inspiring to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you continue to have this strength for the rest of your lives. Um, so now my question is this, and I've heard some things about Lighthouse and Opportunity Academy, and aside from a lot of the supports that you've had to get there and the supports that you had while you were there, were, what was the learning experience about, and was there a subject or, or a trade or something like that that you kind of took to, and now you're looking to do that in the future after you graduate? What are you looking to do in the future after you graduate? So I'm from Gateway, but the curriculum at Gateway, I wouldn't say it's, you know, easier than Hoyokai because that's where I'm from. If anything, in my eyes, it was harder, but I want to go into the medical field. I want to go to medical school, and I want to be a doctor. One of the things Gateway did for me is they enrolled me into the EMT school at HCC. So because of Gateway, I am now a nationally and state certified EMT, had a job interview today at Huntington, think I'm going to get it. Thankfully, because of Gateway, that's what happened to me. But I know that Gateway offers tons of other like pathways for students. They can help with, you know, when you graduate from there and you're in HGC. If you want to go to nursing school, Vivian's going to cheer you on the entire way, and tons of other things. So. Great, yeah, awesome. Share, like, what changed about your thoughts about your path now that you're recovering as a student and on a path? You want to share those? Oh, I didn't know if you were raising your hand. How about Nisha Lee? Oh. <laughs> is that okay? You must know her well enough that she can call you out. Share your thoughts. Oh, she can call out. I wrote your name down. <laughs> yeah. Um, I started off in Holyoke High, and then last year I switched to Pathways, and I didn't really. And I didn't really like it at first, and I wanted to go back to Holyoke High, so they let me go back, and I ended up dropping out last year. I came back again. Well, I wanted to come back again this year so that I can um, graduate. They're helping me graduate. They make, they like make your schedule flexible so that you can be there and feel comfortable. I feel like you have to wake up so early or get out so late. And now they're gonna um, help me get into Gateway so that I can catch up on credits and graduate by next year. Great, good. College. College credits on average. Wow. Picture is students have she realizes how 
Awesome. I just want to echo what some of the other members of the school committee have already said. I mean, this is the the future of public education, or really the present in the Holyoke Public Schools, and I think it really helps us live up to the fact that all students here deserve a, a different pathway, and that not everyone learns the same or requires the same experience or structure. And for so long in American education, we had one system and assumed that all students would fit into that um, that 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 uh, that one structure, that one system of public education. And I just want to thank Dr. Dreich as well, because this is also where a budget is a reflection of our values and our priorities. And we've been able to make the investments to, to make these partnerships possible. And I also want to thank the, the people behind uh, the scenes that have helped nurture these programs over so many years. And Vivian from, from the college uh, that has really loved Gateway to College and has for many years dreamt about getting more students from Holyoke there. And I'm just so happy to see that that has become reality in our district. And I know Catherine and her team at Lighthouse um, have wanted to partner with the schools for some time. And I'm really, really pleased to see that happen and Mickey and your team uh, as well. So I just want to thank Dr. Dreich, the school committee for supporting these partnerships. If not for these partnerships, we wouldn't see the improvement in our graduation rate, the decrease in our, in our dropout rate. And it's important for us to continue making these investments and partnerships. And, you know, all of you could have been in very different places tonight. Um, and you're here um, at a school committee talking about the progress you've made over the last couple of years, and you're probably leaving tonight more optimistic about your future. And uh, so I'm just incredibly optimistic and pleased and um, just really proud of each and every one of you for being great examples for your families, your friends, and other people in your lives and reminding us as to why we do the work we do. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. I have more people that have questions. Uh, Mr. Sheehan. Yeah. And this is either probably a question for Mickey or actually Vivian. I, I'm just curious with um, the the pro, with Gateway, how many students um, stay on after they complete their high school uh, requirements, stay on and complete an associate's degree or other advanced training at HCC? Um, thank you. So we have about 70% of our students who continue on. Um, currently, there were, I think, 48 of our Gateway grads are, are currently at HCC, um, and I think 46 of them, we helped them get there this semester, right? That's the other benefit, is that we are already there. So when they're making that bridge to the next thing, have you done your FAFSA? Let's look at all the things we, we know, right? Um, and then we've earned 32 associate's degrees, but we have another, but we, no one really knows how quickly associate's degrees should be earned by students who totally disengage and then re-engage. So we're part of this national organization called Gateway to College National that's really looking at the rate of students getting <coughs> further degrees once they've reconnected. So um, we're about on par, about 10% of our graduates. We, we have 365 graduates since we, since we started, wahoo. And we've earned 32 associate's degrees. So right now, 10%. Mm -hmm. We also have eight bachelor's degrees and two master's, <laughs> one in education. So All right. yeah, any other numbers? Because I got them, got them in my head. <laughs> I was going to say, right. I was worried I'd put you on the spot, but uh, you seem to <laughs> yeah. know them all. And just for well, those students. Those yeah. folks, associate's degree, <laughs> graduate degree, students, that's, that's right. And our, let me just say, our average incoming GPA is a 1.47 from high school. And our students, when they leave us, and their co average college GPA is a 2.6. And that's before they matriculate, but that's at Gateway. So something magical happens in there. Mm -hmm. And just so those of you who are thinking about going to Gateway or anyone listening to this Gateway, when we mention that students usually get, on average, 15 credits, that, that's a semester's worth of, of college credit. I mean, that you would really only have three more, I mean, three more semesters of work. I mean, it could take longer. It's whatever you're on track for, but to get that associate's degree. But you are, they are getting a full semester's worth with if you make that commitment to your education and everyone there that's willing to commit to you. So that, that's a pretty big deal that you're completing that. Yeah, I think are going to college For the, the state and... Hmm. We're actually talking about how the Gateway to College is an early college program. And so many of the students who we have graduated from Gateway to College will graduate with more college credits than our designated programs that we have with HCC and with Westfield State. Um, so it's an amazingly successful place that has helped students. I love how Miliani shared that she was on a path that was going nowhere, and now she's got a future that she's going to be at HCC starting her associate's degree in January. Wow. Ooh, cool. <laughs> That's 
beautiful. Do you have other questions? I would yeah, yes, I do. Yeah. Miss uh, Tensley Williams. I just have a quick question. The young lady, you said when you first started there was a tuition. Is there no longer a tuition? So th maybe that's better for the staff to answer. So oh. we have created, we have tremendously expanded the partnership with Gateway. So when Steve first hired me, he said, look, I need you to start an alternative high school. And we said, okay, rather than doing it in a traditional way, let's expand it through a partnership model. So we went from like 11 slots that the district would pay for at, the oh. at Gateway to I think we've had over 65 students yeah. there at some point during the year for the past several years. So that was part one. With Lighthouse, and I'll have Catherine share a little bit before we're, at, once we have done with the students, I want Catherine to share a little bit about it. We've created a partnership where we, Holyoke Public Schools, pay the tuition for students to go there just like we do at Gateway, and students who go there are earning a Holyoke right. High School diploma, meeting all the same cr credit criteria and passing all the MCAS. And last year was the first big batch of students to take the MCAS, and I think we had a total of 16 MCASs attempted, so that means like same student might have taken three. 15 of the 16 were passing scores. Awesome. So an incredibly successful start. Great, thank you. Yeah. And I, at, after we're done with students, I'll, I'll have Catherine just share a little bit about that partnership because it's really innovative. Yeah, so I just, first of all, you got the right shirt on, Dartmouth College. I hope you want to go there because it's way better than the college. Brown is, yeah, Brown's yeah. back. Um, <laughs> Mr. Mahoney can attest to that yeah. for you. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I do want to just ask a question um, of any of you up here. What is it about the experience um, at wherever you go, Lighthouse, Success Center, or um, Gateway, that you maybe that we're not we were not providing you at Holyoke High School? Sounds like a lot of you were at Holyoke High North. Some of you may have been a dean. Be curious because you know we we know that the high school, the big campuses, aren't going to work for everybody, but we think they should be working for more kids than they students than they are now. So I'd just be curious. Uh, what your reflections? Because all of you did some time. It sounds like no, I don't. I don't mean did some time. That's the wrong. <laughs> Spent. I apologize. Spent time at our at our high school. So I'm just curious what we can learn from your experience. Well, what worked out for me was that in Success Center they have smaller classes, and it helped for me because they have teachers there that give you more help, and I needed a lot more help than what I was getting in Holyoke High. And that just really helped me. And I was getting on my getting on task and earning a lot of credits, and it really helped me. <clears throat> Jonathan, you got it. I just um. Oh no, I just didn't like staying in class. I couldn't stay in one spot. So I would I would just get up in the middle of class and walk around and then Mr. Mahoney would catch me in the halls, bring me back to class. Five minutes <laughs> after that, I'll go right back to the hallway. In Success Center, I could take a break when I want and then come back and be on task again. So that's why it's easier for me. I couldn't do that because I'll get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, I'm Jose Serrano, and for me, what is different from Holyoke High and Lighthouse, it was that in Lighthouse, they give you the choice to learn what you want, because sometimes in high school, you need to learn about history, and you just want to be a fire, firefighter, and in Lighthouse, they give you a choice to be like, you know, I want to learn about this because I like it. And they don't prepare you to take a test. They prepare you for life. And I really like that, that in Holyoke High, they were, not tell, they, they were not teaching me about how to live. They were teaching me just some tests with some percent. Yeah. But in Lighthouse, they showed me how, how to conquer my fears, how to, how to reach my goal. And I really appreciate that from Lighthouse. Thank you. In Lighthouse, <laughs> oh my God, that's a lot. Uh, first, uh, I'm a musician, so I always have my time for music. Mm. I learned how to record 
I learned how to make a studio from scratch. Uh, I like robotics, so I made my own hand that I can move whenever I want. <laughs> I'm learning about the myth of America. I'm learning about history class of Puerto Rico. I'm learning about art. I'm learning <laughs> so much things. Oh, yeah, I'm practicing Japanese. So, um, you know, it's like mm -hmm. I'm practicing Portuguese and my Spanish and English. And I'm really proud of me. I'm really excited of what I can do on, on Lighthouse. And there's more classes that I took. I just don't remember. They are a lot. <laughs> Thank you. I think one thing throughout like my entire experience through all the different places that I've gone to, and I know it kind of like applies differently to every single person, but one thing I kind of like really, really noticed strongly that kind of what I felt didn't work, and not just me, like I kind of like my friends, you know, really close to me, kind of felt the same thing whenever where I went. Um, I think what was most important, what really, really helped was the, it's the fact that teachers more foca focus more on the, on the person themselves, on who you are. And like he said too, it focuses more on who you are and like who you want to be also, as well as teaching who you want to be in life. Um, also, I think the student teacher ratio is really, really important too, because I think not every student learns at the same pace or the same way. And we also, I, I also think students kind of like approach like anything that's taught educationally differently. I believe that the problem is that teachers are not really understanding that it's still just like people teaching each other about life, not just, you know, teaching students, you know, about school. Awesome. Anybody else have any questions? Marcus, are you going to share something? I told them they didn't have to talk, um, and that's okay. Um, but if you have thoughts on it, soon. Any other questions you guys? Yeah. Nobody has anything? Mine is going to be more of a comment. I think in the audience I see one set of families. Is it one set of parents? Is there another? And they've got so two a couple? I can't see yeah, back here. one there in the corner. Back oh, okay. Have, yes, well, I'm going to raise my hand, too, because I'm one of those parents as well. So I sit here, and one of the special things, or one, what I like to hear is when I see students who have struggled. You know why? Because I see it every day in my own child. And although I'm a lighthouse parent for, what, five years now, um, my daughter was one of the first for your first year, and um, us as parents, we see the struggles that our children go through. And it's harder for us because we don't know how to help them. So when we get these opportunities for our kids, I sat with you over the summer, Mickey. When we find these opportunities for our kids and we start seeing our kids start to shine again, it brings so much pleasure to us because we, we ourselves were giving up because we didn't know where to go. And we can only imagine where, where you guys were at. Um, it has been quite a struggle. Jose, I'm so very proud of you. I've known you for quite some time, and I've seen you grow. Doris, I've seen you around probably at some family fun night. Marcus as well. Um, I am very proud of each and every one of you. Never think that you can't make it. There's always that opportunity. There's always somebody there that's willing to help you to move forward. I come in, from the five of my kids. I've been through every path. Each one was different. Right? I've had one that's a dropout. I have one who went to that lighthouse. I have one that's an out of district. I had one that was a graduate of Dean Tech when Dean was Dean, Dean Tech. And I've also had a charter school graduate. So I've had it all. I get, I get it. I see it. I know what we as parents have to do and make choices on. I want to see this continue to grow because we are still losing on many of our children here in Holyoke. There are still many that are still dropping out and probably because there is no space or because they don't know the other opportunities. So what we need to do is keep expanding. I ask of you when you see your own peers or you hear of someone, reach out to them, talk to them, 
don't give up on them because I re I'm sure that there was a time where you thought everybody gave up on you. Be that person to help them to succeed as well where you guys are succeeding. Thank you. Thank you for being here and for sharing your story. I know it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough as us as parents as well sometimes to say our stories. We try to keep our personal stuff private so nobody else knows, but sometimes we need to share that because there's another parent sitting next to us that needs to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any students who didn't get to share something they would like to share? Would you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to share? Oh boy. You, got, you got words in your, every time, every time <laughs> Isaiah says words, they're powerful, they're profound. You got them? All right, hold on. So I'm going to have, Vivian got to share a little bit. I'd like Catherine to share just a little bit about, uh, it, it's been three years, four years now that I've been working with you, and you probably were working with Steve for a little bit before that. Just share a little bit about your perspective on partnership, and then. Um. Sure, I'll just, I'll be brief, and I'll answer your question. My name's Catherine Cabron. I'm the co-founder and executive director of Lighthouse. We planned and, and created Lighthouse at the same time as receivership was, was happening. So right from the beginning, we had early, early meetings with Dr. Schreich um, about how we can partner, but Lighthouse is an independent nonprofit. So we, have, we work with students from all over the Pioneer Valley. We have students from Amherst and Pelham and Northampton and Westfield and all over, and about a third of the students now are coming through this partnership um, with Holyoke. So the students that come to us from Holyoke remain enrolled in Holyoke Public Schools and they do all of their work sort of like University Without Walls. So they're learning with us. Some of them are dual enrolled with HCC. Uh, they have internships and they can earn credit in all kinds of ways and we document all of that and then we have a team of teachers from the high school that reviews their work and applies credit. So it's been a really amazing partnership that, that has been totally because of Mickey so much work because what we do is really unusual so a student can be like how do you how do you apply credit to an independent project which results in a robotic hand right it's not a class it has a clear curriculum we're kind of learning as we go based on the students interests and supporting their strengths and one you know one strength leads to the next one success leads to the next so how we document that and work with the teachers is really unusual and we are creating it as far as I know unique in the country um, and as you heard from, from these guys, and, and we have a bunch more that will say the same thing, um, that it's really working for them, and they're following their passions and discovering that they really can succeed, and, and the world is a wide open place. So we don't have, you know, for the Japanese class, we don't have a Japanese class, but the whole world is open to us for learning. So they can take an online class, you know, we can hook them up with all kinds of resources, Rosetta Stone, whatever, and then that's their learning. So we're not... Um, we just have so much flexibility in what the students can be pursuing, and that isn't totally easy to document and credit, and so we've been working really closely together to have that clarity so they can move forward towards graduation. And last June, we had our first two Holyoke graduates um, through this program, which was really exciting. So I just want you to hear one thing. So Mildred, you talked about how this needs to grow, and so it's not just us in Holyoke that recognize that that's a good thing that we need to grow. We actually have a very um, promising grant, and I'm going to introduce Jeffrey Schmidt, who is now co-leading Opportunity Academy with me, um, and primarily the Success Center, and he's just going to tell you just a real brief version of what this grant opportunity is going to mean for Holyoke over the next three, four years. Appreciate you, Isaiah. Thank you. Uh, no, Jude, I just want to also thank you. I think what you shared, those remarks were beautiful. Um, and my name is Jeffrey Schmidt. I'm the engagement director with Opportunity Academy. Um, and as Mickey mentioned last year, we, uh, because of, in large part, of some of the numbers we shared with you regarding our improvements on the dropout rate, the four-year graduation cohort rate, um, and our MCAS successes, uh, we applied last year for a grant through BAR, the BAR Foundation, the Engage New England grant, um, to continue building, to continue our design, to serve more more students with more pathways, as, as uh, Mayor Morse led to. Um, and so we were accepted for that grant, and we're, we're excited throughout the year to be able to come back and, and, and share with you guys some updates, and we're going to be spending this whole year um, in design work um, with partners from, from the BAR Foundation and Spring Point Schools, which, which um, has done this work with schools across the country. Jonathan's actually a member of our design team, um, and, and uh, it's just some exciting work that it is truly going to allow for, for all these pathways to expand and for us to be able to service more students, as, as Mildred um, alluded to. Thank you. Excellent.
All right. Students, last words? Yeah? No, you're good? Okay. Thank you much. And um, I just want to I just yeah. want to say if any of the school committee members would like to visit any one of these programs, please let me know and I'll get you in touch with Mickey. You're yep. welcome. I would really encourage you to go visit and see what's happening at either Lighthouse um, uh, Success Center or at uh, Gateway, because I think it's important. It's hard to describe. You guys did an awesome yes, job. Yeah of trying to describe it, but it's hard to describe something that is as unique. And one of the things we were very clear about early on is we didn't want to just create an alternative school because there's a lot of danger in just having a, sc a school where students are dumped. It has to be intentional around the needs of each student and it has to be in concert with the high school. So Dr. Mahoney can't just, he's he's oversees all of this work, so he's got to be in concert with Mickey and with Vivian and Catherine. So we're making thoughtful choices about where students go that really meet their needs and not just we want to get them out of the high school because they're not, it's not working out for, for, uh, for them at Dean or at Holyoke College. It's a really interesting point because some of the students who are on the panel here did not want to come. Oh. And we never made anybody come. We okay. never, it's always right. a choice. And, and we think that's a critical component um, that we, this is an opportunity not an assignment. Mm -hmm. um, and so th I think that's critical. And I think that having Steve Zreich and Steve Mahoney really honored that, that this is about the student and their path has allowed students to find their way, even if it's not right at first. Um, and at Mildred, I love your idea of bring a parent with you. So if you want to come for a visit anytime, and you can just show up. I don't know if you guys can just show up. But I think you can. Just show up. I'd like them to, to connect. So if you for, connect. For <laughs> um, and then bring. I showed up. Bring a parent. Yeah. <laughs> so some people here don't follow rules all the time. Yeah, right, up. right. Um, students, thank you. You guys did great. Um, we can uh, meet you outside and we'll get you home. Um, and thank you for all the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Mr. Cushane? Um, how, how many students are in all? Mickey. Mickey. Mickey oh, oh I, thought, I didn't know if we knew or you oh. know. Uh, how many students are in all three programs? So um, so the, that is actually a pretty difficult question to answer because it's a moving target. <laughs> and by design, I think that when you start working with the students whose lives are falling apart in one way or another, mm -hmm. it's really hard to imagine how variable it is. So over the course of last year, we had 220 students touch just the Success Center. We had 60 plus students touch Gateway. Some of, the, some of those students touch the Success Center and Gateway. Um, Lighthouse, because it's so much smaller, is a little bit more stable, but we have, um, we had tw no, 15 students there total over the course of the year last year. Um, at any one time, we would have about 35 students at Gateway. 10 to 15 at Lighthouse, and early in the year, well, we actually started over 100, so 105 to 120 at the Success Center. And the other piece that we, we didn't get any of the adult learners here, but because they've got responsibilities in life that are beyond um, just school, but we also have 40 adult learners at the Success Center who are learning alongside the high school students and serving both as role models <coughs> and mentors and furthering their own path to education. So I know it's a complicated answer. Well, yeah, try to so There's 151. It, it says right uh, here. On our enrollment report. I mean, no. OK, so 151 at the 51. time that we printed this. Okay, yeah. So the, OK. And, and that, so, I'm sure that's different today. And that's, uh, you think, you know, it, last year, I, I can't remember what year it was that the graduation rate improved by 20% from five years ago. And I, you know, it's, I think it's hard for, um, people who don't know about these programs to understand how that's possible. And so you look at these programs and now you see that, okay, so this is what's going on. It's not necessarily that they're, these kids are, are graduating from the high school. You're seeing them graduate through these other programs right. with the high school. Degree. I think, I think we had, and it's still, we still have a couple that are on the bubble. I think we had just over 280 graduates last year. Um, more than 50 of them were from Opportunity Academy. So Gateway Success Center and Lighthouse all contributed quite a few graduates. And um, so if you 50 out of 280, right, serious percentage. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense.
current, you have the, yeah, as Devin pointed out, the current enrollment is in your uh, packet. Okay. All right, thank you, Mickey. Thank you much. Thanks. Um, so, um, I, so one of the things that, uh, which in transitioning, one of the things we've also realized is we have to go earlier than just high school to look at supporting learners and kids start disconnecting from school much earlier than just high, from high school. And so in the last year, uh, I've asked Mr. Peterson, who's here, to, uh, to begin the development, which launched last year, of a middle school success program. I don't like the term alternative program, success program, which they started last year. We started last year with about seven or eight uh, middle school students. And then this year, we're, um, we don't have as many students to start the year, but we expect it to be around that number, if not more. Um, and also, Mr. Peterson is also uh, running, will be running the launch of our sort of our reboot of our middle school intramural program, which is including more sports and activities for middle school students. So, um, and I do want to thank Mr. Peterson because we've used him in like seven different ways, 17 different ways over the last few years. He was single-handedly a huge part of the turnaround at Dean, led, led the turnaround at Dean. Um, he really helped stabilize STEM last year when STEM was really struggling. Um, as a new school, we brought Mr. Peterson in to help with that. He, at the same time, he was launching a middle school alternative program. We also sent him to Kelly School a few years ago to help Kelly when they were struggling. Um, and so while um, he's, this is a very versatile uh, person who we've used uh, to benefit the children of Holyoke in many different ways. And so I've asked Jeff to come to talk a little bit about the middle school alternative, or sorry, success program, and to answer any questions you might have about that. Thank you, yeah, Jeff. Everybody. I'm like special operations. I'm the special operations team <laughs> for the Holyoke Public Schools. Um, <clears throat> First of all, tough act to follow. Mickey's program is amazing. It really is. Everything you said about it uh, is, is absolutely amazing. And he, he's running a program that I'm trying to model, too. Uh, as Dr. Dr. Zreich said, he called me not this past July, but, but the July before. And he says, I really want you to take a look at uh, some, of our, some of our middle school students. Uh, you know, we're losing students, and people don't realize this because you only hear about high school dropout rates. But we're losing students before they even get to high school. And uh, that, that kind of goes under the radar, and that's amazing, and that can't happen, to be losing 13-year-olds, 14-year-old students. Uh, so we really dug in to, uh, to this situation. And you know, last year, like Dr. Zreich was saying, it was a difficult year because I did start the year uh, working with Dr. Zreich and with uh, the Department of Education on how we can build a program to serve some of the kids that are struggling in middle school. And, uh, you know, last year we, we focused on kids that were essentially attendance or behavior <coughs> problems. And we serviced 11 kids total last year. Um, some of them have moved out of the district, uh, but the ones that are still here in district, there's eight of them, they're either at Holyoke High School, enrolled, doing very well, or they're at one of the middle schools in the district doing very well. And part of the thing that we want to do this year is not just send them back. We've been doing <laughs> outreach uh, on a weekly basis. So myself and my staff, uh, we have a great teacher. Her name is Jariela Cruz. And we have a great paraprofessional. His name is Miguel Vasquez. Some of you may know him as Papo. Uh, we, we actually go to the schools and we sit down and we do check-ins with the kids. We do check-ins with the parents. Um, if, if they are having issues with, with anything that's going on at the school, they call us and we go right down. So that's kind of a big part of our program. And we're hoping that outreach is going to be something that is going to be a big part of that moving forward. Uh, you know, moving into this year, I decided to take a look at all the eighth graders that were overage because we find that students that get to be into high school that are 15 years old or 16 years old as freshmen, they often don't make it, unfortunately. And that's, it, it's not their fault, but by the time they get to be juniors, they're 18 or 19 and, and they're done. They wanna be done, they're mature. They just don't wanna be there anymore. So what have we done as a district to really grab those kids before they get to that point? Um, I found over the summer, I found two students that were 16 years old going into eighth grade. And uh, so we grabbed them. And I met with Dr. Mahoney and I said, listen, if we, if, if we keep these students in eighth grade for another year, 
I don't know what, what's going to happen to them in three years. And I'm sure they'd go to school as freshmen, and they'd probably go to school as sophomores. But if we don't have the foresight to see what's going to happen three or four years down the road, we're going to lose these kids. So Dr. Mahoney was nice enough to, to allow me to accelerate some students and allow them to skip eighth grade and go right into ninth grade this year. And I've been doing check-ins with them all along. And, and I have to say that uh, they're doing excellent. They're doing very well. Um, we also have some students that are in a little bit different situation where they're coming with me to my program, which is the, the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. Um, they're going to be with me for a half a year, and then they're going to transition to the high school. They're just in a different position. So we're, we're finding the students uh, that are in need, even if they don't really know that they're in need right now. We're finding them, we're meeting with them, we're meeting with the families, and we're giving them options. And I think that the families are really happy that they have an option. And, you know, their options are, listen, you can stay in your middle school if you'd like to. That's great. We'll support you. Um, if you want to come with me to my program, I'm going to give you um, a hybrid curriculum of 8th grade and ninth grade so we can transition to the high school this year or you can just transition to the high school. So we're doing a lot of different things um, based on what the, what the needs of the students are. You heard Mickey talk about Lighthouse, how the students are kind of able to tailor their education. We want to try to do that too. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to say that the students that were with us last year are re-engaged in school because of the experience they had with us. And listen, I think that's eight kids that are going to graduate now because they had this experience in middle school and these were kids that were probably not going to make it to high school the next year uh, but but they're here and they're enrolled in our school or they're enrolled somewhere else so we're very happy about that um, any questions about that before I transition into the middle school intramural sports program any questions about my middle grade success Mr. Uh, just a question about parent involvement yeah with, with the students that you're having problems with yeah any problem with the parent involvement? Uh, are the parents cooperating with you? Yeah, very cooperative. So my program is completely volunteer. Uh, we, we cannot force any child to come to our program, even if we think it's best. Uh, the decision is completely up to the parents, and we tell them that. Like I said earlier, they have the option. If you want to come with me and, and, and let, let us work on what your issues are, uh, that is totally up to you. And we Virtually all the parents have been very happy about it, and they, they send them to me, and they're very happy about it. Um, and I'm also getting a lot of parents inquiring about the program. Uh, we're getting phone calls saying, hey, so-and-so wants their son to come to this program. Can, can so-and-so come and check out the program? So it's getting out there. It's, it's pretty good. I have DCF calling me now saying, hey, I heard about this program that you're running. Can, can I recommend a kid to you? Uh, so it's getting out there. This is only the second year. Last year was the first year, but I think most of you know my time was really split, and I spent a majority of my time at STEM last year uh, after, <coughs> after the beginning of the school year. So I, unfortunately, I don't think I gave this program the effort that I should have, but this year I'm, I'm committed on really getting it off the ground and hopefully building it into a program like Mickey has at, his, at, at the secondary level. Super. Any other questions? Je uh, Jeff, can you just talk about the locate, like where it's located? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. This year we are housed at the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. Um, we've, you know, we thought it was important to have this school off-site, not be out of school, and uh, we we have a, a relationship that we built over the last couple of years with the Boys and Girls Club, where we're using their space, and uh, they have a great setup there. They have. Um, uh, classrooms, they have technology, they have gym space. Uh, it's a short walk to the park. We went to the park today. It was great. And, and you know, the, the, the same thing that Mickey allows his kids to do, our kids can come and work for 15 minutes and then, hey, can I take a break? Of course. And they can get up and they can take a break for five minutes. And, and it's, hu it's, it's huge. They, they get up for five minutes, they come back, and they sit down and they're ready to go. And maybe they have to take a break every 15 minutes. That's okay. But as a public school, uh, you know, a, as the leader of a larger school, you really can't have everybody doing that. It's just the way that it works. You can't have all of your kids getting up and taking breaks. Um, <clears throat> so these kids are certainly benefiting from the, the freedom, yet the high expectations that we have. They're getting so much work done, and they're learning so much because they actually have the freedom, and we, 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 <laughs> we treat the students, we treat the students uh, like young adults, and it's really paying off for us. <clears throat> yes, sir. 
So I just want to say, like you're talking about expanding the opportunities at the High School Opportunity Academy, this is probably the most important That's next right. thing to expand. So the students that Jeff had last year, Jeff had, had me and a couple of our folks from my team come and introduce ourselves so that we, they kind of knew that path was available to them. And their maturity and ownership over their path was dramatically different than the average middle school kid. And so the same thing that you heard from our high school students, you'd have heard the similar thing from, from the students in the middle, success grade, middle grade success program. Um, and the connections, we actually have our students at the Success Center at the Boys and Girls Club every Friday to do the non-academic parts, what should be high school. And we'll be starting to integrate together on some stuff with, with time. Uh, but this, this program needs to grow because the, the most important area to, to stem the dropout risk right now that we haven't been able to do as thoroughly is in that seventh, eighth grade years. Ms. Rosalie Williams. Um, I just want to say to Mr. Peterson, um, keep up the good work. Anything we can do, don't hesitate to call on us. Thank you. Everybody's like, always been excellent. so supportive, all of you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cushy. So what, what are the um, what are the constraints that you have in that location? Like, what's the max number you could, you know, yeah. comfortably get at at the Boys and Girls Club? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a really good question. It's not. I wouldn't say that the constraints we have is because of space. Uh, it is very important for our classes to be eight to ten range because our students uh, that we're serving right now they they excel in that range eight to ten. Uh, anything you student teacher ratio you mean or student? Yeah, just a smaller just a smaller class size. Listen, I think the important thing is is having the ability to uh, individualize what students need. I mean, we, we just can't, we can't treat everybody the same. We can't give everybody the same services. Um, it work, that works for 90% of the kids, but the students that Mickey and I serve, they just need something, they just need something a little bit different. And um, being in a smaller environment, uh, a lot of our kids have anxiety issues and being in a smaller environment with the adults that we, that we have in the program who, who are amazing, uh, it's just a great environment. It, it's, so I wouldn't say that the space is a constraint at all. It's a personnel? No, it's not a personnel thing. I, I think for, for us to be up, yeah, it, if we were to hire another teacher, yes, we could double in size. But uh, I, I don't know if we're ready to do that right now. I think that I really need to do, take what we have and make it really, really good before we really start to talk about doubling up. Um, but I would love to see that happen in the years to come. And one thing that you had mentioned, what they learn, they also learn self-regulation. They do. Which they need as they grow yeah. older. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we, we, we allow them to take a break. Because I need to take a break sometimes when I'm at work, <laughs> right? So uh, we allow them to take a deep breath. And that's okay that they have to do that. And they shouldn't have to feel ashamed. Yeah. Uh, I oh, can. Mr. Burks? Mr. Peterson, I just I want to thank you for everything that you've done since your time here in Holyoke Public Schools. You have been a tremendous asset to uh, to this district. You, you did. You came in. You you developed a great team here at Dean. You did a great job turning it around. Um, and your value um, was able to be spread throughout the district when was needed. And you and you stepped up to any challenge that was given to you. And you made a huge difference in the in a lot of students' lives. Um, I want to thank Mickey for what he's done also. i um, known him for a while. He's been in the district for a while. Um, and this was, I think, tonight's meeting um, opened my eyes a lot um, to really what's going on in the district in terms of um, all of our students um, having opportunities, especially those who don't normally have them. And you two um, are doing a lot to, to give them those opportunities, as well as the teachers and other supports that they have, which is, which is incredible. Um, tonight was a meeting where people really spoke from the heart. And some things that kind of turns me off is like a lot of uh, buzzwords and academic rhetoric that comes along with it. And you guys are really passionate about what you're doing, and it shows, and it shows in the students that come, it shows in the students that 
that you affect, you know. So I know that you're doing this with a passion and with a feeling that, that um, and a love, and a love for the students and for what you do. And, and it shows and it's spreading throughout the district. And that's why we're seeing the gains that we're seeing. So again, I will thank you guys again for everything that you're doing. It's really, um, I wish I could do more than just say thank you, but it, uh, it, it, it's, but it's, that means a lot. Thank it's, you. It's, it's huge. It's huge for, for the kids, you thank know? You. And the other thing is that, um, it's a community. So something else that, that we kind of overlook are relationships and so not just the relationships between you and your students, but relationships that we talked about partnering, the, the public schools partnering with HCC, public schools part, partnering with the Lighthouse, um, and you being housed in the Holyoke Boys and Girls Club. I mean, these are partnerships that, that mean a lot and they shouldn't be overlooked and it shows the power um, of a community when they come together for a certain cause. And, um, and we should recognize that and we should learn from that. Um, as a community tonight that we're not going to, no one does this alone. Right. And it takes everyone together to, to, to succeed and to make anything possible. So again, thank you thank very you, much. For thank you. Mr. Perez. I'll also like to say thank you with the mentoring last year. That was great. That was yeah. a big part. How um, some of the freshmen, some of the sophomores and some the higher grades got to help some of the kids that were going through rough things and how you helped with us with that. Yeah, can, can I, can I, do you mind if I explain a little bit about what that was? Um, By all means. So, you know, it was, it was really cool to actually be at STEM last year because I got to work with, with Mr. Gates. Uh, and most of you know that Mr. Gates and I came to Dean uh, three years ago and, and we really had a good time uh, helping that school turn itself around. Um, but as, as I came back um, to work with STEM, Mr. Gates and I got together on a, on a student mentorship program where students from Dean Tech were actually mentoring some of my students at STEM. And it was, it was incredible, the, the benefits that it had for everybody. Uh, you know, the, the, the older students, the pride they felt as they were able to mentor the younger kids and, and my students, uh, you know, really feeling that they were cared about by an older student, it was just great. So thank you for, thank you for that shout out, it was a great program. Mr. Christian, you had something. I had a question. Um, so my, my kids, as you know, just graduated last couple of years um, through high school and wrestled, and I think wrestling is a, a very important uh, hiring criteria, in my opinion, yeah, I tell them uh, for them. when these types of <laughs> programs, I think it, I, I just think it works very well. So, so, but um, I, I've been very concerned. I, you know, I see a, a lot of success in the later years, and I do get worried because I know that there's certain district policies, and I've talked about these before. I'm not going to go over it again, but I'm very concerned about kids not being prepared to come to the high school. Yeah. They come to the high school, and they spend their first two years struggling and ultimately leave before they even maybe get introduced to these other programs. So. Yeah. What I'm wondering is what, you know, I'm just trying to, I, I, I like the idea of this program a lot. Yeah. And what is the need? Like, do we have like numbers, Dr. Strike, about, you know, how many kids are we losing freshman, sophomore year? You know, we're, we're at between, you know, the number 10 and what number are we losing that need to be in a program like this? And how do we bridge that gap? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we're, our, our dropout numbers total have gone down. I mean, I think we had 50 dropouts last year total in the system. Um, but I, I think the issue is more, there are a lot of kids who are entering high school not prepared, really disengaged. And so whether they end up dropping out or just really sort of spiraling as they get to high school and they, and they, if you're disengaged, you tend to also be the child that's roaming in the building, right, right. causing disruption because you feel disengaged because we haven't done our job in um, supporting them. And that's why we think backing it up, you know, there's, there is a, a number of ninth graders who really struggle. Some of them do drop out. Some of them are ending up in our Find Their Way to Opportunity Academy. But it's a little too late. Um, and what we want to do is avoid the big gap. Dr. Mahoney could t talk about the, the, the you know, the, the not freshmen are the ones that struggle the most yep. um, behaviorally. 
uh, because they're disengaged when they get to the high school. So we really, um, but it starts in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and that's the purpose. We know who these kids are already that are going to struggle as ninth graders, and we're not doing enough about it, and that's the... Uh, there's, a, there's a relationship between myself and Dr. Mahoney already talking about kids. Uh, I, I don't just I don't just send kids to him that I know would struggle. We have conversations. Um, I, I talk to his team. I say, listen, this student has these strengths. This student has these weaknesses. Um, I've been in contact with his family, and uh, like we we have those conversations. Um, and I think we can even do a better job of having more of those conversations. But I, I'm really taking it as my responsibility to know every middle school kid in this district and know exactly what they need, okay? Like, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, do I know that right now sitting here? No. But a year from now, I, I better. Like, I better know that. Um, I've, I've been in every, every middle school in the district already since school started. And uh, I'm, I'm here to help the kids. And, you know, Papo, um, Miguel Vasquez, who I think a lot of you know, <laughs> Um, he knows all the kids. He knows all the kids. And I'll, I'll take Papa with me, and we'll have those difficult conversations about whatever's going on in their lives. He can say some things that I probably can't say. So he, he we, we, right? We, we hit him. We hit him pretty good. Like, we hit these kids pretty good. So by Christmas time, there's, there's not going to be many kids in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade that I don't know. Um, but you're 100% right. But that's why we're doing this. That's why we're doing it. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Going. <laughs> I, I, I'll just be really quick about the middle school because I listen. It's past my bedtime already. Um, You're good. <laughs> I'll just be really quick. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm real serious. Yeah. Um, I'll be really quick about the middle uh, the middle school um, intramural program. We received thanks to Dr. Reich and, and the Commissioner of Education. Actually, uh, we received a twenty-five thousand dollar grant from the Play Ball Sports Foundation, who, who was actually critical in the turnaround of the Lawrence Public Schools, uh, engaging middle school students in activities to hook them into coming to school, all right? We talked about kids being disengaged. We're hoping that some of the kids that don't want to be in school but love playing basketball or love playing football, we're hoping that they're going to be on these teams, but we're, we're asking that they come to school, that they don't have discipline, uh, that their grades are high, and we're holding them to a standard just like we would hold high school kids to a standard. Uh, we've doubled the amount of sports from last year to this year. Uh, we're working in conjunction with the Boys and Girls Club again. We are splitting our basketball program from co-ed to a boys and a girls program. So there's going to be a girls basketball program, which is really cool. Um, we're talking about boxing down there. Uh, we're talking about swimming. Um, we're going to do a creative dance. We're, we're really we're, we're expanding the options rather than just basketball, football, soccer, volleyball, which is great. But we want to do chess. We want to do all kinds of things. We want to reach a lot of kids. Um, I know that sounds less exciting than, than the, the previous matter, but to me it's very important because if it wasn't for sports, I, I wouldn't be here right now. And I think there's a lot of kids out there that feel the same way. Uh, you know, I, I, I think the relationships that they build, um, not only with each other, but with a positive Coaches. positive coach, you know, uh, starting at that age, I'm just very optimistic. To, to be doing what I'm doing at the middle school. And uh, I think there's a lot of good things going on at the secondary level. And I, and I think there's just more communication now about the kids in the district. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Thank you, Anybody, everybody. Ms. Felicia? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. Wow, that's been quite, quite a lot of information and, and a lot of success stories. I'm not going to follow any of that, so you have my notes. If you have any questions, you can ask me about that later, or uh, if anybody has questions now, you can ask that, but you have the notes here. Enrollment is in your packet. We're over 100 more students than we were a year ago at this time, um, so that's a good sign. So our enrollment looks like it will be up this October 1st. Certainly still have a week and a half left. Um, 
and I'm going to stop right there. It's been a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Mr. All Perez? Right. There's some things that I forgot to add about Dean. Okay. I think it's a good community because it's not only about like the teachers. Us students, we get to do not what we want, but we're in charge sometimes, like town hall. We be in charge of it. We do what we do. Like um this upcoming town hall it's gonna be Diesel doing it. And then um what else was I gonna say? Um whenever we wanna recognize someone, we do it. Like someone's birthday in the cafeteria, we sing happy birthday for them. And that's how good of a community we are. We sing, we have a teacher that sings for them. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. There's a lot of wonderful things happening in our district, you know. And we have to be very happy and proud of even all the successes, you know. There's always going to be some wrongs, but we, are, we have to continue building on the successes within our district. And this... Opportunity Academy, the between middle schoolers, including high schoolers, is is that path to moving forward for our city. So, being that you don't want to share your superintendent receiver correspondence, we well, can look at it. Yeah, I don't want to keep people here all night. So, <laughs> any <laughs> any new business? No. <coughs> Time out. Sorry about that. Old business. Really quick, I know last um, our last school committee meeting, I believe we talked about the um, breakdown uh, into the sub subgroups and numbers. Can we get that for the next being that we're having an MCAS? Yes. Uh, comprehensive review. Yep. What well, you're talking about discipline and the attendance discipline, and attendance, you name it, suspensions, everything, <laughs> arrests. Any update on the city council school committee meeting? Getting it together, trying to schedule it. Don't worry about it. We're scheduling it as we speak. So hopefully, uh, end of this month or sometime next month yeah, on the 10th. Awesome. Mildred. Yes, Ms. Brunel. <clears throat> um, just want to point out there's an information session on Wednesday night at the senior center. For anybody within the community looking to get more information on the proposed middle school project, um, the more information you have, the more of an educated vote you can cast. So please attend that. Uh, what time is it at? 6? Six? 6.30. 6.30 at the Senior Center this coming Wednesday, so two days from today. Thanks. Excellent. Any announcements? You know, we got this beautiful handout with all these announcements on it. And some people in our that are probably watching us, hello in the TV world, they don't, they're not aware of these. I'm sorry. So open houses we know about, but tomorrow's Holyoke Day at the Big E. So whoever uh, wants to go and represent their city, please go represent Holyoke. The parade um, starts at 5. We're going to have the Holyoke High School Band and cheerleaders. Um, the Holyoke High Athletic Hall of Fame. I know that's something that Mr. Brunel was really uh, working on. Um, that's October 5th at the warehouse. Um, so tickets are available. They have a list of people that they are going to be inaugurating into the Holyoke High Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, there's the Holyoke Chamber of Commerce and Holyoke Public Schools Supplies Drive. So please... Uh, they're participate partnering to hold a school supplies drive. So that's that. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of information, and now that one's long. But anyways. <laughs> Did you want me to read through my notes? or? Uh... <laughs> no. All right. But no, just. And <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys need to stop. Last but not least, really quick on the welcome back. The welcome back project for uh, welcoming all the students back. Great job. They did really great. Thank you to everybody who participated. But next year, can we please include the Transitions Academy? Which is a welcome back. They're part of our welcome back. Welcome to the crew. We're outgoing. We're, we're really nice people. And welcome back, Charlotte. And we'll see you guys all next month. And move, move meeting to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Any? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? <coughs> Meeting adjourned at...
736.